Hey, what's going on everyone? I am David Meyer with Bigger Pockets. Welcome back to our second installment of the deal of the day. Today we are going to show you how to use a low money down FHA loan and a refinancing strategy to turn a single property into an entire portfolio. We're going to be looking at a deal that comes from us from a Bigger Pockets member in Florida, um, and they've started an awesome career in real estate investing. We're going to dive into how she got her first deal and how she's looking into a second deal, and we'll decide if that's a great, uh, a good deal for her to pursue. Before we get started, um, please, guys, um, we love producing this content for you, and if you love it, please like, share, promote it. Um, please uh, give a comment. Um, go make a smiley face, whatever you got to do, promote it um, and, and let people know that we have this awesome content going on for you guys. Also, we're going to be doing this deal of the day pretty frequently. Uh, we have another one coming up on Friday with our buddy Matt Faircloth. Um, he just had a new baby, so make sure to congratulate him. Um, and he's going to be doing another deal of the day on Friday, so make sure to check that out. Um, so. Let's get into it. Today's deal um, comes from Katjen Rodriguez. She's a Bigger Pockets member. We got this on the Bigger Pockets forums. So if you do have a deal that you want us to analyze here on Facebook Live or on YouTube, please go to the Bigger Pockets forums and post it there. Uh, we request that you do put an MLS listing there so we can do some research about the property um, and also ex include any rent that you can estimate, any expenses. That will help us give you the most accurate reading of your deal as possible. So Kajin bought um, a, a, a townhome in 2009 um, and recently refinanced it. And because of that refinancing, she has some cash to buy another deal. So we're going to be looking at that second deal. But I think before we jump into that, what's really important is to look at what refinancing is and how it is, can be used by new or really any type of real estate investor to help build their portfolio. I actually refinanced two properties last year using a similar method. I was able to take cash out of my existing properties and bought a new property without coming out of pocket for any additional cash. Um, so what is refinancing? Basically what it means is that you are starting over with your mortgage. So um, you are now taking the new value of your home and beginning your mortgage again which kind of sounds terrible at first, right? I mean, like you've been paying down your mortgage um, and you're, you know, a couple years into whatever term you have, 30 years, why would you want to start that over? Um, and there's basically two reasons. The first would be uh, to lower your interest rate. So if you got locked in at a, a really high interest rates and those have dropped over the few years, you might want to refinance because it would save you money by paying a lower interest rate. Um, but we're not really going to talk about that today. Sec what we're really going to talk about is doing a cash out refinance. So that basically means you are going to refinance your property and at the end of it, if all the conditions are right, the bank is actually going to hand you a check for some money. So this is an awesome thing for real estate investors because it allows you to keep the property you already got and you get cash to keep investing into new properties. Um, so let's just talk about this a little bit. This obviously doesn't work in every case. So um, don't take this as a catch-all, but if you have paid down your mortgage for a couple of years and you've seen appreciation in your neighborhood over a couple of years, you might want to start thinking about doing a cash-out refi. And I'm going to do some, some ballpark numbers here. We're also um, going to look at Catchin's deal. Um, but if you do want to do this kind of deal for yourself, you can go to biggerpockets.com and check out our calculators. I'm actually going to be giving out a discount code to use those in just a couple of minutes. So make sure to stick around. Um, it's an awesome tool. If you are getting serious about investing and want to start doing this analysis for yourself and apply what you're learning here in this video, um, definitely stick around for a couple of minutes and I will be giving out a 20% off discount Discount, which is awesome if you're thinking about using those types of tools. All right, so I put together a couple of numbers here just to demonstrate how a cash out refi works. And just so you guys know, I'm going to round these numbers. I'm using simple numbers. We are on Facebook Live. I don't want to get too complicated, so I'm going to round a lot of the numbers. But here's the basic idea. In, 20, in 2010, you bought a property for $100,000. And we're going to simulate this using an FHA loan, which is what Katchin did, and I would highly recommend for all new investors because you can put as little as 3.5% down. So your down payment would only equal $3,500. 
And of course, um, you'd be right to say that there's other out-of-pocket expenses, which are closing costs, and that is true. But for the purposes of a cash out refi, that's not really relevant. It doesn't really factor into the financial equation at all here. So we're not going to talk about that. That means the loan, what you own the bank, comes out to $96,500. Excuse me. Okay, so that's what you owe the bank at the beginning of your mortgage. But let's say, like Katchen did, this deal was bought in 2010. So you've actually paid down this mortgage and there's appreciation. So I'm going to use a very considered, um, like, if I'm going to use a very conservative um, number here and say 3% annual interest. All right. And if you guys are just joining, what we're doing is we're talking about refinancing an FHA loan so you can pull cash out of your existing property and use it to buy a new deal. One of our Bigger Pockets members, Katchen, did this um, and is now looking for a second deal. Uh, I think she's also on the comments, so say hello to Katchen. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate your help. Um, and uh, please, if you guys like this, share, comment, like, all that good stuff. So if you do 3% annualized appreciation, um, your house would be roughly $120,000. Again, it's a little bit less than that, but I'm going to use these nice round numbers um, for the ease of this presentation. So after six years, your house is now worth $20,000 more than it was originally. But that's not it. You've also been paying down your loan. Every time you send that check to your bank, you are paying down this number. And it's important to remember there are two parts um, to the loan. There, well, there's actually three for an FHA. There's principal, there's interest, and there's also um, uh, PMI, which is mortgage insurance when you put only 3.5% down. However, every time you spend, you are paying principal, which is this number. This is the amount you, they lent you to buy the house. Interest is what the bank is making in profit. So um, if you... If you look at an amortization calendar or an amortization schedule, you can see what proportion of your check each month is going to principal and what is going to interest. And this changes. In the beginning of your mortgage, you will be paying mostly interest and less principal. And as the term of your mortgage progresses, you will be paying more and more principal and less and less interest. So you can look this up. Um, it's a pretty, it's a math equation. You can find this online pretty much anywhere. But after six years, um, on an average mortgage, um, and this will obviously change, um, you would have paid this down by about $13,000. So what you owe the bank is $86,000. That is how much you have, you've paid them $13,000. You owe them eighty-six, dollars right? So you could go sell this house, and you would make the difference between that. You have to pay a broker probably 6%, so you're losing money there. There's also closing costs, so you're losing money there. Um, but what I'm going to suggest is doing a cash out refi. And please, guys, if you have any questions, please let us know. Post them in the comments. Um, I'm happy to um, take some questions here. My buddy Zach is here. He's going to read us some questions. Um, so let me know um, if you have any while we're going through this. So that is one equation. But here's what I'm going to say you should do. Rather than sell the house, you can do a cash out refi. So you're going to go from doing an FHA loan where you had 3.5% down. But an FHA loan requires you to live in the property. So when you move out, you're going to, that's going to change. For an investment property, you're going to have to put between 20 or 25% down, depending on the situation. Um, I'm going to say 20% down just for the ease of this example. So that means you're going to be taking out a new mortgage at $120,000. We know that it's valued this because the bank will have your house appraised. So they'll have a professional appraiser come and tell you what your house is worth. And so now you're basically buying the house from yourself again at this higher rate. But since it's now an investment property rather than an owner-occupied property, you're going to have to put 20% down. So 20% of $120,000 is actually $24,000, right? So we have 24K. Um, and so that the bank is going to hold on to. That is the equity you are putting into the house. So if you subtracted that, um, I'm going to erase this 86 for a second. So if you subtracted the 24K from this 120K, now we're at 96, right? 
Let's say closing costs are about three grand, probably what is pretty close. So minus three, we're at 93K. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> based on the amortization table, we saw that we only owed the bank 80, 86K. Oh, um, sorry, 83K. I was wrong about that. My mistake. We only owed 83K. So after all of this, you still have a $10,000 difference that you can now take and go invest. So you're keeping the house that you own, you can now rent it out for cash flow, and now you have $10,000 to invest. And what is so brilliant about this strategy and why I really commend Katjin for, her, for her, um, her purchase here is that if you refi out of an FHA and go to an investment property loan where you're keeping that 25% in equity in the loan, you are now freeing yourself to get another FHA loan. So now you can put 3.5% down again on your next property. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, that's just a little background on, on, um, on refinancing. I hope that all made sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm happy to, 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 to go over any of this again. But we're going to look at it in a real-life example now um, with Catching's deal. Um, again, guys, um, please like, share, comment. Um, and we are going to do this analysis. So if you just for watching, um, we are going to offer people 20% off the Bigger Pockets Pro just for um, watching this video right now. If you want to do an analysis like this, you can go on biggerpockets.com. We'll put the link in the comments. And the coupon code today is DOTD. I'll put this up here. It's DOTD. Lowercase, that's going to get you 20% off your Bigger Pockets membership um, for the rest of your friends. Um, and uh, uh, please just make sure um, to tag your friends, comment, all that good stuff while you're here. Um, and let them know that um, just for watching this video, you can get 20% off Bigger Pockets, which is a really good deal. Okay, so let's finally get to Katchen's deal. So, what she did was she bought a four bed, three bath townhome. And that was in 2009. Um, great time to buy. Great job. Um, and she bought it for $190,000. All right. So then she had it appraised recently, and that came in at $243,000. Uh, I mean, that's awesome, as you guys can see. That's like 25% appreciate more than that. Um, very significant appreciation over the last couple of years. Um, really good job. It's like 35% appreciation. Um, looks like you made a great deal, Katchen. Well done. Um, and she, just like we did, um, uh, just like we did here uh, in the original example, 3.5% down as an FHA loan. Um, and so she did it. And like I was saying, she had to invest out of that and pull equity out, um, pull cash out, but keep equity in. She put 25% down, and that happens a lot. You probably, if you've bought your own home or are looking at an owner-occupied place, you hear that it's you know 3.5% for an FHA, but you could go up to 20%, um, and that's pretty standard. For an investment property, it changes a little bit. The bank wants you to have a little bit more skin in the game, and so you're going to have 25% down. So um, of that, um, that is uh, 61K. So we have to subtract. So the bank is going to keep 61K, right? Minus 61K, and that equals 182. So um, that is how much um, she would make after that. Um, but after paying off her mortgage for seven years, like we were talking about with the amortization, she's been paying down her principal. And so she, on her original loan, only owed $159,000. So that would normally be $23,000, but uh, Katchen told us it was about three k for closing costs, and that leaves her with uh, $20,000 to go make a new investment. I mean, this is awesome. Like Before we go into looking at another deal, let's just look and appreciate what Katchen's done here. She took a 3.5% loan, bought a $190,000 property. It appreciated dramatically over a few years. 
But even with the appreciation, she also was just paying down her mortgage um, and was really um, is, is, is working it from two ways. The value of the house is going up and what you owe on your old mortgage is going down. So the gap of how much money you can take out of your uh, existing property continues to grow. Awesome. Great job. You're killing it. Um, so let's just also appreciate what she's done in terms of FHA. Um, she has not just um, like taken $20,000 out, but she's put herself in a position to get a second FHA loan. So people ask all the time, like, how do I do low money down? How do I do low money down? This is how you do it. You have put 3.5% down. Now you've put equity into your house so you can do another 3.5% down. So this is an awesome strategy. The only caveat is that Katchen will live in the property that, that she is buying. For FHA owned, there is a requirement that it is owner occupied. Um, so seriously, great job Katchen. This is awesome. Um, I don't know how long you've been doing this. I assume this is sort of your um, one of your first deals. Great, great, great work. Um, and uh, we're going to move on to the um, looking for your next deal. Um, before we do that, guys, thank you so much for all the likes and comments. Really appreciate it. Um, keep doing it. Keep it up. We love it. Um, and again, if you want to start doing this sort of analysis, um, Bigger Pockets has all sorts of calculators. Um, we'll put the link in there. Um, it's a really cool tool. Um, if you're not on Bigger Pockets already, go sign up. It's free. It's an awesome tool for everyone. You'll learn a ton. Um, and if you are ready to go pro, if you're thinking about making an investment over the next year or so, you really got to start analyzing deals. Like this is why we do this every day is because analyzing deals has to be um, the more, uh, has to be one of the things you do all the time. Even if you know it's a bad deal, even if you know it's a great deal, still run the numbers, figure out what's a good deal. You're going to start learning so much. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, and if you need some help with that, check out Bigger Pockets Pro. You can get 20% off with the code D-O-T-D. All right, guys. Um, before we jump in this, please, again, we're just asking everyone to share, comment. This is a new video for us. We really want to spread the word. Uh, take a minute. Tag a couple of your friends. Tag your mom. Tag whoever it is. Um, we'd love to spread this. We want, really want to blow up this, this thing. We got some great feedback that people like this deal of the day, and we want to get it to as many people as possible. So keep it up, guys. Thank you. We got a couple questions. Sweet. All right. Zach says we got some questions. So we got a uh, we got Chris Cogswell um, who's asking. So what if you don't want to do owner occupied? Is conventional mortgages the way to go? Yeah. So um, that's a great question. The question is, if you don't want to do owner occupied, is conventional mortgage the way to go? Um, I would say yes. Um, there are obviously other ways to do it, um, but you can't do an FHA. Um, for a lot of non-owner occupied, you are going to have to put 20 to 25% down. So it's really a decision about what kind of strategy you want to do. Like if you um, have some cash and can afford to put 20 to 25% down, go for it. Uh, if you are in the, if you're just starting out and just have, want to put less money down, owner occupied is a great way to go. But I'd also suggest looking at sort of the in-between, which is what actually Katchen's deal is proposing, which is house hacking. Um, you can buy a duplex, live in one side of it, um, rent out the other side, and still qualify for an FHA loan. Uh, most states, most brokers, um, if it is four units or less, it still qualifies as a residential loan. So you can still get those really favorable down payment programs, down payment assistance programs as well, which are awesome. You should definitely check that out. Um, so I really, um, I think that's, uh, it's really a personal style, but if you are getting into it, uh, I, I really think like house hacking uh, affords you both. You don't have, you can, you can live on the premise um, and you can be near your tenants, um, but you can also qualify for those, um, those residential mortgages. Awesome. Got a couple more here really quick. Um, so maybe we can knock out two with one. So Zach, All right. Zach Brand said, uh, or asked, I thought FHA was a one-time thing. And Justin, um, I don't want to butcher that last name, <laughs> but how long are you required to occupy the property for an FHA? Great question. Um, so FHA is not a one-time thing. Um, you're not. And I'm pretty sure you have to occupy the, house, the FHA loan for one year. Um, let me double check on that. Don't count me on it. Um, do you know, Zach? 
long? Yeah. Um, Is it one year? One year. Yeah. Percent down. One year. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no, you can refinance out of the FHA um, and do another one as long as you do what Katchen did here, basically, where you are refinancing out of your FHA loan into a conventional mortgage or a commercial mortgage, uh, then you can qualify for FHA again. And then, um, and then Katyn responded with, uh, just decided to invest this year after reading and becoming addicted to your site. Awesome. We love that. Thank you, Katyn. If you're like Katyn and do love bigger pockets, Again, please promote it. Let people know that we're doing these videos um, on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. Uh, please promote it. Um, so let's get to it. Are we good? One more? Yeah, let's do We got one last question here. <coughs> uh, just came in from AB Winner. All right. Can, can you explain the process of taking out equity to purchase another property? Is that coming up? Um, yeah, so basically that's the, um, just to summarize basically what we said. The, the process is... Um, you apply for a new mortgage. Like if you've applied for an FHA loan, it's going to be similar, but you're not applying for an FHA, obviously. So you're going to be, you want to talk to a different kind of lender maybe, or maybe your lender does both. Um, but you're going to ask them, tell them that you want to refinance and they will know exactly what to do. Um, the, they're going to go through a very similar process of your original mor mortgage origination. Um, they may not do an inspection, but they will do an appraisal. Um, that's how they'll get the value of the house. Um, and then you will have to submit all your financial documents. You know, there's always a lot of paperwork. Um, but then at the end of the day, um, your new loan will write two checks, assumably. They'll write one check to your old bank or your old loan. Um, it might be the same bank, but whatever. They're going to pay off your old loan. And then the difference between your new loan and that payoff amount is a check literally to you. Um, I did this a couple of months ago. Um, they just handed me a check. Um, and I, I took it and I went and reinvested into another house. I didn't have to, that, that was enough for the entire down payment on a new house. Um, and so it was an awesome, I mean, it's, it feels great. You're just basically like multiplying your properties um, without taking any more cash out of savings or anything like that. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. All right, so let's get to this deal. Um, so let's, let's look at it. Um, basically, what Katchen is looking at, let me pull this up here is one property, two duplexes. So a total of four units here. Um, and I think that's an awesome deal. Like I said, uh, four is typically the, the limit on when you can get a residential mortgage at favorable rates, better down payments. Um, so four and under is a great place to look if you're a new investor. That's how I started. I bought a fourplex, um, got a great mortgage, um, and it, it really is one of, the, one of the better things to look for. Um, so let's look at it. So each, each duplex is selling for $229, um, but there's two of them. So there's two duplexes, and they have to be sold together. So we're actually looking at a sales price of, oh, sorry, of $458. Um, all right. Um, this is four units. Each one is two bed, one bath. So it's a total of eight bedrooms and four bathrooms. So big property. This is awesome. Super cool. Um, I wish there were more of these places on the market near me. This is definitely the kind of place you want to be looking for, for sure. Um, it is fully rented. That's obviously something you want to look at. It is metered separately. So each tenant is paying their own gas, electric, all that. Another thing that is often overlooked, but is super great. Um, you never get, um, you know, you never have to deal with like splitting up electrical bills or worry about your tenants just leaving your lights on all the time because you pay the mortgage or you pay the utilities. Trust me, that happens. Um, so that's really nice. It's something that you just don't have to worry about. And the broker is saying that the gross rent is $61,500 per year. That's awesome. That's a really, really great number right there. Um, so if you figure that out, it comes out to, because there's four units again, it comes out to $5,125 a month or $1,280 per unit per month. So that's $1,280 per unit per month, all right? Okay, but we have to remember, this is an FHA loan again. So Catching will be living in one of these uh, units. So we have to subtract that from the total. So when we figure out what Catching's actually generating in rent, it's going to be $3,844. I'm going to round that to $3,850 in income. Awesome. So the mortgage, um, I just 
did it in the Bigger Pockets calculator. Again, if you want to use these calculators, um, go on biggerpockets.com. If you want to sign up for Pro Today, DOTD is the coupon code. You'll get 20% off screaming deal. Um, so I, I put in the calculator and figured out our mortgage expense would be about two, $3,230. $3,230. Three thousand. What did I say? Two hundred and thirty. All right. So that's our mortgage, um, and then we're also going to do expenses. And I know I'm sort of glossing over the different expenses here, but it's really hard for me to guess. Like, uh, I mean, utilities are different, repairs are hugely different costs in different markets. So I'm going to do my best just to estimate it. I've been doing this for seven years. I think I have a pretty good handle on it, but I'm not going to get into super detailed. On that point, Katchen, if you know what the expenses are, let us know. Put it in the comments. Um, let people react to it. Um, we're curious what it is. Um, but basically, if also, if you're going to submit a deal of the day for us, let us know what you think the expenses are. Break it down for us. We're happy to put it up here. But for me, sitting in Denver, never investing in Florida, never really being to Florida, I don't know the market well enough to make a good guess. So I'm going to use my best common sense and say that's about $750 per month for all the expenses. So that's repairs, maintenance, capital expenditures, um, insur uh, no, insurance is already baked in. Um, what am I thinking? Vacancy, all these different things. Um, so again, when you go on the bigger pockets calculators, you can put all of these individual expenses in there and you can see how it affects your cash flow. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to uh, lump them together. I was guessing today when I was looking at this property about seven seven fifty, but again, just for the ease of math right now, um, we're going to put it at about four thousand, right? So that's four that's four thousand total um, expenses. Sorry, this is getting confusing. Um, I'm just going to write four thousand total expenses. Um, that's everything, all in your four thousand a month. And then we realized that her income was about $38.50, right? Yep. $38.50. So that means Katchen would be coming out negative $150 per month. Now, obviously, you don't want to hear the word negative. No one wants to hear negative on a deal. But actually, I think this is an awesome deal. So think about what's going on here. Katchen is living for $150 a month, right? That is her total living expense out of pocket for her utilities, for her, um, for her entire uh, life, living, housing, all of that stuff, $150 a month. That is incredible deal. I don't care where you live. You can't live for $150 a month. So um, also, remember, Katchen just refinanced out of a second house. And she's now renting that out. So I'm guessing, I don't know, Katchen, you can tell us how much you're profiting over the uh, month. Let us know. But... I'm guessing you're making at least close to this 150 bucks a month, um, and now you are basically, for free, you are building up equity in your homes. And again, not everything in real estate is about cash flow. Cash flow is awesome. Everyone loves cash flow. Money in the bank. It's great. But think about the long-term play here. One. Catton will now own five units. This is bound to appreciate over time. I know the market goes up and down, but owning five units is an awesome way to make money over the course of your life. Um, it's a hedge against inflation. It's a really good thing to do. Um, and I think the other thing that a lot of people forget about is the fact that what we talked about before, you are paying down your principal. You're just paying back the bank and other people are doing it for you. Now for, four, for all of your units, all five, including the one you live in. Other people are mailing checks to the bank, essentially, and saying, like, I owe you less and less. Every month you send that check, you owe the bank less. So every month you send a mortgage payment, when you go to sell it, you are going to make more money. So now you have five different units, people just paying down your mortgage. And eventually, I'm sure rent is going to go up, whether it goes up in two years, 10 years, I don't know. But eventually it's going to go up. Also, Think about the fact now that Katchen is also not coming out of pocket for any more money. She is taking the money that she refinanced out of and is putting it down. So um, that is awesome. Also, okay, 
Zach's telling me that Katchen just got back to me, $4.50 a month she's making on that rental. That is a killer deal. So now she's actually still, she owns five units, she's living for free, and she's making $300 a month. This is why real estate investing is so awesome. Look at how much money she's making. She made one down payment uh, in 2010, and now she has making positive cash flow. She owns five units, people are paying her mortgage. It's awesome. I, I mean, this is such a great deal. Um, Really, congratulations, Katchen. I would, I think this is a, a really, really good thing to do. And also, the other thing to look at is she's living in here. So we know that if she moved out of this unit, she would be making another twelve eighty per month. So if she, it, it would automatically go from negative one fifty to positive eleven thirty if she moved out, wanted to move somewhere else. She could be cash flowing. Um, so again, I, I think this is a great deal. Um, I mean, if it were me, I would take it. Um, I, I, good luck to you, Katjen. I would definitely, um, definitely um, think about it. Let us know. Please follow up. Um, put it on Facebook. Go to the Bigger Pockets forum. Let us know if you buy the deal. Send us some pictures. We'd love to see it. We can do a follow up show or something like that. Um, please, if you guys have any questions before we sign off, um, we'll definitely do that. And remember, these kinds of analysis are hugely important, and every investor really needs to learn how to do this. It's, uh, it's, it's probably the most fundamental thing you can do is learn how to run the numbers quickly. Um, it's going to take some time to learn the detailed analysis, but you'll get a hang of it. And if you want to use the bigger pockets calculators to do this, we welcome you to say thank you for being and coming to our second inaugural deal of the day show. We are offering um, for the next 24 hours, I think it is, um, a 20% off coupon. It's deal of the day, D-O-T-D. You can enter that when you're signing up for Bigger Pockets Pro. This is our thank you to you for helping us pr promote our new show. Uh, Zach, do we have any questions? Um, yeah, so Jared Drake, um, how much on average is FHA mortgage insurance? Um, I think it's about 1% um, per year. So I, I um, am not sure exactly. You'd have to talk to a lender about that. Um, but they, they say it's about 1% per year. So it could be a significant cost. Awesome. Um, and then Zach Brandt has another question. How should you find percentage for CapEx vacancy and repairs? Great question. Uh, the question is, how do you find a percentage for vacancy cap rate and repairs. Um, and this is one of the things I would really use bigger pockets for. Um, it, this, is, it's, this is more of an art than a science. There's nowhere you can go and look up what things are gonna cost. This is the biggest part of risk. This is the biggest risk in real estate is that there's gonna be a large expense um, that you don't foresee. So I think the first thing um, you could do is go on to biggerpockets.com. If you're not already a member, you're crazy, you should be a member. Um, go on the forums <laughs> and ask a question and ask people, you know, find someone in your neighborhood. What does an average roof cost in this neighborhood? There are some websites you can check out, um, but I would more than just like looking at aggregate numbers, I would try and find someone in your area that could help you estimate for a given property. Like aside from, so I'm already saying that like analyzing deals is the most important thing, but also networking is hugely important. Like knowing people who have done this before, who have had to replace a roof, had, had to have an HVAC system repaired, that is gonna be hugely important, not just for referrals to trusted quality workers, but also for expenses. Um, so that's really what I would do. You can look up average vacancy rates. That is one thing you can usually Google and check out online, um, but it's really highly market dependent. Like Denver, for years and years and years, there's like no vacancy. I don't know if that's gonna change, but for the first seven years I owned my property, I didn't have a single vacancy. But I still build it into my models. Like obviously you wanna be conservative, um, but I really would uh, think of it less as a percentage even and just try and research like the really big costs. To me, those are foundation repair, um, an HVAC system blowing out and needing repair, a roof, any structural damage. Um, so obviously, it depends on the house too. Like if it's really old, you're gonna to wanna to have a much more conservative estimate. I buy houses that are typically over 100 years old. Um, so I think, I, you know, I built bacon a lot for CapEx repairs like that. If it's new construction, maybe some of these things are under warranty. Um, so you really have to dig in. This is sort of like the meat of doing a deal analysis. Go figure this out. Again, put in the bigger pockets calculator. It'll help you figure out if it's a good deal. Um, and 
also let people know if you figure out what this costs, please go on the Bigger Pockets forums, share your knowledge. That's what we're all about here at Bigger Pockets. So um, hopefully you can get some information there and, and share your knowledge when you learn something. Awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, Eric Bell, somewhat unrelated. <laughs> you might be able to touch on it. All right. Uh, what's a typical interest rate to offer on a seller finance? Uh, that's a good question. I, I actually don't know. Um, I would have to, uh, I've never done a seller finance and I've never, yeah, I wouldn't know. Um, but again, go in bigger pockets. Check it out. I'm sure someone can tell you that. Um, so that's kind of all we, uh, all I'm seeing in here. Um, awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you guys so much again. Like we're really pumped to be doing this deal today. Make sure to come back on Friday. Our buddy Matt Faircloth is going to be doing a deal of the day. Uh, definitely join us on Friday. We'll be posting the time in a couple of hours. Um, but again, please um, share, like. Um, we really want to promote this. People seem to be getting a lot of value out of this, and we want to promote it to as many people as we t want. As we were saying, you know, Bigger Pockets is all about sharing knowledge, and so please help us spread the message. Um, and again, uh, don't miss out on the deal if you've already been thinking about going pro. Um, Bigger Pockets Pro is an awesome deal. Um, if you are thinking about, if you're already an investor, if you're thinking about investing in the next 12 months, I would really highly recommend this. We have all sorts of tools um, for investors to help get their first deal, help them feel confident when they're going out to talk to sellers, getting an agent, all this stuff. And today, just for joining us on this, uh, this new program we're doing, we're offering 20% off, D-O-T-D. That's it. My name is Dave Meyer. Thank you guys so much for coming, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of days.